Hello and welcome to Droix. In this video we are checking out the brand new GPD Pocket 3 N6000 processor model. We will be comparing it to the Pocket 3 i7 model to see the difference in performance versus price for them both. We reviewed the Pocket i7 model a few months ago and in terms of physical appearance both models are the same. So to save some time check out our i7 review video for the unboxing and a closer look at the device including features such as its modular add-ons. One thing to add is that the i7 model we reviewed was just a pre-release model and did not have the gyro sensor. Both models now have the sensor and the display will now automatically rotate based on the orientation of it. Onto the technical specifications. The GPD Pocket 3 features the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 processor which has 4 cores and 4 threads running up to 2.5GHz. There's 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 512GB of NVMe storage. For connectivity there is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. Both mini laptops are powered by a 10,000 mAh battery. In our tests we got around 13 hours 45 minutes whilst left idle on the desktop and 3 hours 30 while running Passmark on a loop. The N6000 model is not as high performance as the i7, but we will run a series of benchmarks to see its performance and compare the scores later in the video. We start the system benchmarks with Passmark, which performs a series of tests on the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage. It pushes them to the maximum to see their peak performance. The GPD Pocket 3 N6000 scores 1903. It's a good score for a PC of this specification. The fast SSD definitely helps keep things running smooth. Next we run PC Mark, which performs a series of tests for your more day-to-day -day tasks. These vary from web browsing, video conferencing, working with large office documents and image editing. The Pocket 3 scores 2871. There's good scores on essentials such as boot and software loading speeds and also in productivity categories. But it falls a little on the digital content creation side which is expected due to the slower GPU. In our final system benchmark test we are running 3D Mark which tests the CPU and GPU together for their performance. This is not only for gaming but also used for tasks such as media consumption and image editing for example. The GPD Pocket 3 scores 424. It is a far lower graphics score but do take into account that this is a lower specification of device. Unfortunately we were unable to get Forza Horizon 4 working on our usual benchmark settings. This is most likely due to the 8 gigs of RAM being shared with the graphics and there was simply not enough RAM to go around. Street Fighter 5 fared better. We are running at 1920x1080 at max graphics settings. At the end of the first match we get an average frame rate of 13.14. At 1080p on the low settings we get a far more enjoyable 57 frames per second on average. You could reduce the resolution to 720p and increase a few settings to make the graphics look nicer while keeping it running at 60fps. We are running the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark at 1920x1080 on the high desktop settings. We got a final score of 1431. Our final benchmark is for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We are running at 1280x720 on both the lowest and highest graphic settings. At the end of the lowest settings benchmark we get an average of 16 frames per second. And for the highest graphic settings we get an average of just 7 frames per second. This is a very demanding game so it's not something that is playable on this model but runs far faster on the i7 model instead. Here is a recap of the benchmark scores for the GPD Pocket 3 N6000 model. 
We have reviewed a few mini PCs using the Intel Silver processors, and they have been good for work-based tasks that you may perform day to day. With the N6000 CPU, we get to decent scores in system benchmarks, but when any graphics processing is required, it does fall short. And here are the benchmark scores compared with those on the GPD Pocket 3 i7 1195G7 model. As you can see, there is quite a difference in performance between the two models, with percent differences in the 40s for system performance. The largest differences are where graphics processing is required. The Intel i7 with its Iris Xe GPU makes a massive difference, ranging from 66 to 96%. It is the same processor used in the GPD gaming handhelds, so we can expect a higher performance. That's not to say that the N6000 model is not worth considering. If you want a mini laptop simply for your day to day tasks and have no use for tasks such as image editing and gaming, then the N6000 is definitely something to consider especially considering the difference in battery life and price differences between the two. That wraps up our review and comparison of the GPD Pocket 3, i7 and N6000 models. We hope you have found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in our next one.